Don't you just love a good plugin? I know I do because it makes my life so much easier as a developer and it saves me a ton of time. So in this video, we're going to look at the localization resource manager for .NET MAUI, which makes it very easy to add localization. So translating your .NET MAUI app. Now the localization resource manager .maui is a plugin that will help you with translating your app, adding localization to your .NET MAUI application. Now, if you're watching this video and you're coming from the Xamarin world, this all might look very familiar because this functionality, I think it's almost identical, um, lived and still lives in the Xamarin community toolkit. Then a good question would be, why is this not ported to the .NET MAUI community toolkit? Well, I'm glad you asked. So we didn't do that because now with the community toolkit .maui, as we also call it, we have bundled our powers and everything with the community toolkit dot, um, dot net or dot windows because there's also the windows community toolkit and maybe there will be others in the future. Um, so we're trying to look at like, hey, how can we leverage stuff that might have a broader audience, right? So this functionality, this specific functionality, we've added a proposal to the broader community toolkit package so that other um, ecosystems like WinUI and other XAML based languages can also benefit from this. Um, um, so that's why it hasn't been added to the .NET MAUI community toolkit yet. But as kind of a stopgap solution, um, Johan Svensson uh, from Sweden, if I'm not mistaken, um, he has created this plugin, which basically takes the functionality from the Xamarin community toolkit, makes it av available for .NET MAUI um, while we're waiting for the implementation on the community toolkit one. So let's just dive into Visual Studio and let's see how you can use it right now today to um, make your .NET MAUI app speak Spanish or English or .NET or whatever you want. Stretching. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio 2022. I just created a file new .NET MAUI application. You can see the beautiful, beautiful example in the background in Visual Studio. In the foreground, you can see the Android emulator running that same app with the waving .NET bot that we've seen many times before. Um, now, the first thing that we want to do is um, stop running. <laughs> That's what we want to do because we need to install a plugin, right? I've been talking about this already. So let's go to the Solution Explorer um, and I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to do manage NuGet packages. Then I'm going to go to the browse and I'm going to type the um, localization resource manager dot Maui. And if you search for that, I think there's exactly one result, which you can see here. Um, and there's a lot of contributors already. So that's great um, because this is a community package, right? So that's really amazing. Um, so latest version at the time of recording 1.0.3. Uh, let's just install that, make sure that we read all the uh, license agreements here, click OK, and it's going to be installed on our project. Now, as with many, many plugins, uh, third party libraries, with .NET MAUI these days, uh, we need to initialize this a little bit in the MAUI program. Um, and that also gives us a lot of options already. So let's go over to our solution explorer and go to the MAUI program. And here we need to add a little initialization line. So just after the use MAUI app, or you can do it after the configure fonts, or if you have other stuff in here, we're going to do a use localization resource manager. And I think it's not going to add it automatically. So I'm going to use IntelliSense here, click the light bulb, do using localization resource manager Maui is going to add it here at the top. Um, so you can add do that manually as well. And here I can configure, actually, I have to configure a couple of settings here, uh, which has been done through a Lambda. So let's just do settings is going to act as input here. And I'm going to do a couple of brackets. And now I can say settings, and we can see a couple of configuration options. So we can say restore latest culture, which is pr a pretty cool option, if you ask me, because this automatically restores the latest culture um, that has been used inside of the app. So you're going to switch, we'll see that in a minute, switch through a different culture at runtime to make the translations in the app happen. Um, and the last one that the user picked is going to be restored automatically. No need for you to save that. It's just going to be loaded automatically. You can do add resources um, or add resource rather, uh, which takes a resource manager. I'll get to that in a little bit. You can add file resource. So you can load things from a file if that's what you want. You can set the initial culture. So the initial culture that's going to be used. So if you have a specific culture, um, let's stay in the, uh, the, the cultures of Johan who created this 
this uh, library, let's say with Swedish, if Swedish is your primary language, your primary target, you're going to set the initial culture to Swedish. Um, and you know, the Apple startup has um, with that culture, basically. So you have a couple of those things. And um, well, I think in the documentation, you should definitely check it out. I will put the GitHub link for this library down below as well. Uh, the initial culture and the restore latest culture that kind of like, you know, um, is kind of like conflicting functionality. Um, so I think one overrides the other. So make sure that you check the documentation on how to use that exactly. I'm going to say restore latest culture is true. True. Is this a setter? What is this? Is this not a property? Cannot assign because it's a method group. Okay. So <laughs> restore latest culture. I forgot how to program right here, right now is true. And what I'm also going to do is do settings. And I want to, of course, add the resources. So add resource. And I'm going to say app resources, because that's already a thing. Um, and dot resource manager. Now, I've already done a previous video on um, translating all this stuff um, on localization, but then doing it manually. And um, there I've created the um, app resources inside of your .NET MAUI app, as you would do in any other .NET project, basically. So um, the app resources is just something, it could be any name. Let me just click the um, IntelliSense here using MAUI localization resource manager sample. That's the name of my project, dot resources. Um, so when I import that, it, it starts recognizing this. And here are my solutions. Explorer, there is under the resources folder, I have this app resources.nl. So I'm going to do a little Dutch here and app resources.resx, which is the culture whenever or the resources that are going to be used whenever a culture is not found, right? Um, and if we go in there, you can see this designer. So I have already the counter click setup, which is going to translate our clicked, uh, our counter click button, and a hello world text, which is going to translate our hello world thing. Um, so these app resources are already here. And this resources file, this .resx file, uh, generates some code in the background, right? And what it also does, it, it generates a resource manager. And we're going to add, we're going to make this resource manager, these app resources, we're going to make them known to our localization resource manager by saying add resource. You can add multiples here, you can add multiple of these lines, and it will just, you know, compile the whole list of resources here. Um, and it's called app resources, just because I called this file app resources, right? So if I would name this Gerald resources, it would say Gerald resources here. So that's kind of like how that all works together. I go about it in a little bit more detail in the other video, which should pop up on your screen right now. So we've got that set up. Um, let's just save this. And now our localization resource manager is ready for use. Um, so the easiest thing and probably the most um, um, common thing that you're going to do is use this in XAML. So let's go over to our XAML right here and go to this label where we say hello world. But now I'm going to actually import this um, um, plugin here in my XAML as well. So I'm going to add this XML namespace. That's how you typically do it. And I'm going to call this LOC for localization, but I don't want to have the whole localization word in here. Um, and then I'm going to just search here for localization resource manager dot uh, Maui. That's the one that you want to import port, it will automatically fill that in for you. And now I can use that LOC thing. So go back to my text, and you're going to use the same syntax as for bindings and all kinds of other extensions. So I'm going to say LOC, and you can already see LOC translate. So translate is a thing that's built into this plugin. And now I can just specify the key from the resources. So I had the hello world and the counter clicked. So I'm going to use the hello world here. And this is it. And this is it. Now I'm going to um, get the translation of this hello world text. You also notice there is this string format. Um, also, again, check that other video that was just linked. It's also linked down below where you can do things with the string format that works exactly the same here um, so that you can use variables inside of your strings. We'll also see that a little bit later when I use this stuff from code. So if I run this again on my Android emulator, we're actually going to see the exact same app. Uh, so it's not going to be look, looking really um, um, impressive, actually. Um, but is going to now load this from our resources file. Now, while this is loading, let me take you through to the next step, um, because we actually want to switch this stuff at runtime, right? Um, right now, it's already going to switch whenever I switch languages on the device. So whenever I say in my Android device, of course, this is also supported on iOS and all the uh, platforms that are supported by Dyn and Maui. Whenever I switch the language of my device and I restart the app, probably, I'm not really sure if that's necessary. Um, it's going to automatically pick up those resources and translate that stuff for me. But you, there, the chances are that you probably want to dynamically translate your app while 
um, you know, while the user is actually in here. So I was talking long enough for the app to be actually deployed. So let's go check that out first. And again, we should see nothing changed. The hello world string should just be there and nothing has changed. Right, here we go. So that's still there. Uh, but now what we can do if I stop running this and um, I want to switch the language dynamically, um, what the initialization line in my MAUI program also did is add the iLocalization Resource Manager, the interface, to my dependency injection container. So what I can do is just inject that here, the iLocalization Resource Manager, and let's call that localization resource manager because why not? And I'm going to do I localization resource manager with a localization resource. I've said localization resource manager too many times at this point. Um, so here we have this private field and I'm going to assign it here so that I can use it anywhere. And boom, we've done that. So now I have this localization resource manager and what I can do here, whenever I click the button, which is a counter button, I can say, hey, if this localization resource manager dot um, current culture dot two letter ISO language name is um, NL. So whenever it's Dutch, I'm going to switch it over, set the current culture to new culture info. Um, and I'm going to set it to, well, ENUS. That's kind of like also very specific. I'm just going to set it to EN. Um, also, there is a lot to discover with like the how whole the localization actually works. And else, I'm going to set it to NL, right? So current culture is new, whoops, new culture info. And I'm going to set it to NL. So now it's going to toggle between English and Dutch. And actually, the English one is kind of funny because I haven't specified English as English. That's just going to be the default one. So it's going to fall back to the one without the um, identifier here, right? So the app resources without any identifier here. So this should toggle that thing. So whenever I run it again, let's just do that really quickly. Um, whenever I tap the button, you will see that hello world string going to toggle, right? So it's going to do that. And there we go. Actually, no parameter list constructor defined for type main page. That's because I forgot something. <laughs> I'll just leave this in. This is fun. I'm not perfect as well. So I forgot something because if we want to use this um, constructor injection, I also need to register my main page, right? So let's go to our MAUI program and I'm going to say builder dot services dot oops, services dot add transient. You typically want to add your pages as transient main page and now it's able to resolve those things as well i'm going to register this now it's going to see hey i need to create a main page and in my dependency injection container there's also the i resource localization manager um, i'm going to inject that in my main page constructor and that's how the whole dependency injection works i got a video on that as well it should pop up on your screen or you can find it down below i've got this and it says hello world. And whenever I tap the click me now, it's going to go to hello world, right? So I didn't show you that value, but this is the Dutch value for hello world. So that works. It just now switches around. It updates all the stuff at runtime. So pretty cool. Add the plugin, add three lines of code or something like that. And boom, we have our localized resources right here. Um, so now if you want to use this from code, um, you kind of like have to leverage that localization resource manager as well. But there is a cool thing. We have a localized string. Uh, which is, you know, a, a, a specialized version of a string, basically. And let's call this, um, I don't know, counter clicked, um, something like that. Counter clicked It's not the best name, but it'll do for now. And what I can do here is counter clicked is new. So it's going to create a new localized string. Um, and then in the um, parameter, in the uh, constructor, I have to specify a function that will actually get the value for me, right? So I'm just going to do this Lambda expression again, and I'm going to say localization resource manager, and you can use this as a um, kind of collection, right? As a dictionary. So whenever I do this, this block parentheses here, you can um, specify the key that you actually want to get from the resources. So here I also have that counter clicked one, and this is going to be used to actually get that counter clicked resource, um, put it in that localized uh, string, and now I can use this as well. Um, actually, this one has, so let's pull up, open the resources actually here. Um, you can see that this has this, this um, brackets, the angle brackets zero, and that is what you can use with the string format. So whenever I do this, I have this counter clicked. Uh, I'm going to use that here for the counter button. I'm not gonna uh, do things with the uh, times and, and that, that, that kind of stuff. You can totally do that, but I'm not gonna do it for now. Um, and I can say here string dot format and I'm going to say that counter clicked dot localized, right? So that's the actual string. That's going to be the string value because the string dot format is not suddenly going to understand our localized string object. So I'm going to do that. 
And here I'm going to set that count, right? So and that's this is important. So in that string, in the resources, I had that angle bracket zero. I could also add more angle brackets one, two, three, four. Um, and then you have to have the same number of parameters here, right? So if I could do the count a couple of times, it's going to fill that in for zero, one, two now, right? Um, and this probably doesn't make sense to have the same value in here, but that's how you can use the string format. And that's also how you can use the string format from XAML. It works the same way. Um, so whenever I do this now, you're going to see the counter button text also flip around between the localized version and it will have the actual value of count in there. So that is pretty cool. Here we go. And click me, click, click, click. You can see clicked, uh, vier keer geklikt, that's Dutch. And whenever I flip it around, it's clicked five times. So you can see it flips around actually during runtime. So that is pretty nice. Now, this is actually using the string from the actual like code behind, which is probably, you know, if you're going to show dialogues and that kind of stuff, this is very helpful. Um, but you can also use, still get some um, um, strings from your code behind and then bind it to your XAML, right? So you can definitely do that as well. Um, then you have to say something like, you have to turn this counter clicked into a property. So it's going to be a public localized string and you're going to use the um, get and set probably something like that. Um, and then you want to um, set this to is new this 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 okay that works um, now the naming doesn't really match it um, and you should say something here like button text click me but what you can now say is um, just use a regular binding and you can say that counter clicked dot localized string I think this is how it actually works um, and now you can use that I think actually XAML doesn't like this stuff so let's just do this and update it here as well, just to see if the IntelliSense agrees with me. Um, so now you can say dot localized string. It probably doesn't pick up on the IntelliSense. Uh, not localized string, and now it will update at runtime also automatically. So that's another way of you know, like combining the code behind and the XAML here as well. Um, all this code you can find in GitHub. The link is down below. And that is how you can easily translate your .NET MAUI app with the use of this amazing plugin. I'm a big fan of understanding how stuff works um, under the hood. So I definitely recommend that you watch the other video on how to do the localization yourself for your .NET MAUI app, and then basically forget about all of that and just install this plugin because it's freaking amazing. Um, because it saves you so much time and it's so very easy to use. It, it, it just translates your whole app just like that. And I've just showed you strings. You can also use this for files, for images, um, for all kinds of things that you want to translate. I remember that one of the things that uh, people were asking me on the other videos, like, hey, how do I translate like all the other system stuff? So, you know, for iOS, you have some system controls, maybe for Android as well. Um, if that's something that you're interested in or anything else, please just let me know down in the comments. Um, for this plugin, thank you, Johan, for um, putting this together. It's really amazing. And hopefully we can get this into a community toolkit soon so that it will probably reach an even broader audience. But at least now you know how to get used, uh, get along with, with this, basically. Thank you so much for watching. Again, one of my videos, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you haven't had enough of me just yet, go check out this playlist with all kinds of video about Don and Maui, this recommended video, especially just for you on this day. And um, I will hope to see you for the next one. See you for the next one.